Well, what is up? Glad to be here with you guys. My fi in the house, my fi, my friends. Man, uh, what a year. Uh, getting close to the end here of 2022. And I'm excited about this episode because I'm going to talk about my favorite albums of 2022. I'm going to talk about some honorable mentions. Uh, and I'm going to get honest about my Apple replay. Okay. And, and listen, I, before we do anything, let me remind you. Go follow us on socials, having some fun conversations over there, posting some recaps from the year that have been really cool. And all the artists who've been involved, man, been reposting stuff and engaged. I just appreciate that. It's been amazing. Uh, 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 reposted some stuff this week from um, Andy Prince, who's the bass player for Manchester Orchestra, Kimmy Shelter, who's the front woman for Starbenders. Uh, I mean, just several people. I actually got to uh, go to a show uh, a week or so ago, see David Ramirez here in Atlanta. Picked up this fine hat if you're uh, watching on YouTube or Spotify video or, uh, or or what have you. So, and yeah, just uh, it's been an awesome year. It's the first year of my fire. We dropped our first show in June, and uh, with my friend Weston Hine, and also did a pilot episode with my friend Timmy Allen, and then we kicked it off with Old Sea Brigade, uh, Ben Kramer, uh, who uh, has just blown up this year, had a great record come out. Man, we just, uh, just so thankful for all the artists who've been on the show. Uh, so go make sure you follow us on social at my five podcast everywhere. And then Go over to the website, make sure you check that out, myfivepodcast.com, and make sure you're subscribed. Subscriptions mean a ton to a new podcast like us. When you go over there and subscribe on Apple Music or subscribe on YouTube and you rate and review and all that, it's really, really challenging to grow a podcast nowadays because there's a, there's a lot of great podcasts out there. But I feel like we have something unique going on, getting to talk about the stories that of the music that has uh, inspired and influenced artists and creative people in their careers um, and in their lives. And, and so we're just thankful that you're here. And I'm excited about this episode. Um, lastly, I'm going to do my top 10. Uh, I'm going to do my honorable mentions. But first, I just want to talk a little bit about the whole like Spotify wrapped um, Apple replay thing. Okay, two, two things. One is an artist. Uh, I know that's a struggle for artists who maybe didn't release a record this year. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe you look at some of your peers and contemporaries and you don't, when you post your Spotify wrapped as an artist now, you don't see the numbers that compare to some of the people. And I don't know, sometimes it can be like a little discouraging and making music and being an artist has always just been about having the courage to put yourself out there and be who you are and do what you do, you know, unapologetically. And, and so I just want to say congratulations to all the artists who had anyone listen this year. There are literally like tens of thousands of songs uploaded in like every minute or something to digital services. And so, and I'm sure so many of them are great and it's hard to hear everything. One of the things I love is checking out new music and discovering that. And so, man, I just want to be an encouragement. If you're out there making music, please keep doing it. We need you. We, you never know. Uh, when something's going to connect with people right at the right time in their life and become meaningful like these 10 records were to me this year. And uh, a few of these bands were were new bands or they're bands that I had never heard of before. And so I'm super excited to talk about that. But anyway, don't, don't be ashamed. Be encouraged if you're an artist out there. I'm a songwriter, guitarist, producer as well. And I need to hear that as much myself as maybe you do too. So, and if you're a listener out there, um, and you're, you, you know, you're posting who you listen to on Spotify. I feel like sometimes, uh, it can be like really embarrassing. Like if people find out like that, you, you know, been listening to a certain band, like more than anything. Cause you tell people I'm in all these, like, you know, rich, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, 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 quality, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, like credible, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. I mean, all these credible, cool indie bands or whatever, whatever, whatever. And then you get your Spotify wrapped and, and like number one on there is like, wham, you know, I don't know. Uh, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like what you like, be who you are, do what you do. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to be unapologetic about my, uh, spot or my, my Apple music replay, which is like their version of it. Excuse me. And, uh, my number one listen to artist this year was Dua Lipa. You know why? Cause she's amazing. And, and Future Nostalgia was a killer album. I listen to music while I run. And man, I got on that record. I run a lot, of, you know, several times a week outside during the summer, especially when the weather's good. And I was just listening to that record over and over again while I was out there running. And I racked up some plays because that record is awesome. 
and the writing's awesome and the production's awesome and it's fun, but it was like different kind of pop music. It was funky. There was a lot of like Nile Rodgers kind of like funk guitar stuff in it. So I was just like all about it. Uh, great, great, great record. Great, great artist. My number two artist of the year on Apple Replay uh, was Our Lady Peace, who I've loved since 1995. I'm going to talk about them a little bit later. Red Hot Chili Peppers was huge uh, for me this year. They released a ton of new music. And so it makes sense because just to listen to everything <laughs> that they released this year uh, would probably get them up there for, for a lot of us. Uh, number four is Def Leppard, one of my favorite bands of all time. You know, I've talked about on my top 10 favorite albums of all time, the bonus episode we did a while back, which you should go listen to. I talked about Hysteria is way up there for me. It's a great record. And they actually released a new album uh, this year too called Diamond Star Halos, which was really great. Uh, it didn't make my list, but but it was a really great record. There were so many great records I had to like, that you know, I had to like not, they didn't make the list. I had to, I had, I had to cut them and, and it was killing me. And, and Diamond Star was a great record. And number five, because um, uh, Apple Replay only shows five artists, was uh, Harry Styles because his record was great. Um, I'm flipping through and then my like most listened to artists were all of those dual leap was number one, our lady peace, number two, um, red hot chili peppers, number three, Def Leppard four, Harry Styles, five, six was kiss. Seven was the midnight. Eight was the struts. Nine was Norma Jean and 10 was David gray. And I have had the fortune in the last, uh, maybe 18 months. I saw David gray live. I saw kiss live. I saw the struts live. Uh, I saw Def Leppard live. So I got to see several uh, of these groups too. Um, my top five albums I listened to this year on Apple Replay were um, uh, Apple Music Replay, were Future Nostalgia, Spiritual Machines 2 by Our Lady Peace, Unlimited Love by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, both released this year. Uh, Harry's House by Harry Styles, number four, and, and Kiss Revenge, which is my favorite Kiss album of all time. I don't care what anybody says. Some people, you know, if you're a Kiss person, if you're like into that thing, uh, uh, some people don't like when people say that their favorite Kiss albums were un like non makeup Kiss, and Revenge was in the '90s when Kiss had taken their makeup off. But I'm telling you right now, cover to cover, that is one of the best rock and roll albums ever made, and I'll argue that forever because it's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think that wraps up my Apple Apple replay. So. Hope that was fun. Uh, maybe maybe, uh, maybe you laughed a little. Hope you did. Uh, but let's do the actual episode, okay? Let's, let's do the show. Let's get into it. All right, all right. Here we are. Best, not best, my favorite albums. I always want to clarify that. Um, these are not the best albums. I don't know who's allowed to say that. I mean, I guess Rolling Stone is allowed, you know, they think they're allowed. I don't know. Maybe they're allowed. They got, you know, they've been doing it a long time. Also, I follow their list. I follow, uh, uh, Pitchfork's list. I follow, um, who else? Consequences Sounds list. Uh, I don't know. There's probably a few more out there. If I really thought about it, I follow some lists and go on and, and, and make sure I didn't miss anything. And I always miss stuff. I always miss things. You know what I'm saying? Nobody gets to hear it all. So I flipped back through and found uh, I found a great Earl Sweatshirt record that I missed. I don't know how I missed that. It was really awesome. If you like hip-hop music, killer, killer, killer album. Um, a few things that I found. Just That was just flipping through Rolling Stone's list. I don't think I've gotten to uh, Pitchfork or Consequence or Paste or some of the other uh, music uh, media news outlets that I that I like to follow. Uh, so, so you should... Um, Definitely go check out all of those lists, but hopefully as you're listening uh, to, to my favorite albums of 2022, you're going to find, you know, some records that maybe you missed or some things that you also enjoyed and, uh, and uh, appreciate those albums together with me. Um, all of these records, as I talk, they will be in the show notes and I'll link them over to their Apple Music pages. Um, and... Yeah, if, and if you need anything, shoot me a, shoot me an email, uh, myfipodcast at gmail.com, or you can go to the website and uh, contact us there. So anyway, glad you're here. Let's let's just get into it, man. Honorable mentions, honorable mentions. Here we go. I uh, for, First up, Wet Leg. Wet Leg, inc- incredible indie band, incredible indie record. I'm a sucker for great indie guitar tones and really um, 
I don't I don't know even how, what to call it, but uh, they released a self titled album this year. Um, obviously, also called Wet Leg had some great songs on it. Shay's Lounge is a standout on that record. Um, I just love the tones. It kind of reminds me of the Breeders. There's a little bit more uh, like maybe pop in wet leg than like the breeders, the, the band from the nineties. Uh, if you don't know, but it reminds me of that a little bit. And I just really, really, uh, love the sounds and the songwriting and the song structures, uh, and everything on that record. And it was a record for me that I listened to when it came out. And then I had like a season that I went back to it for like a couple of weeks. And then I just recently pulled it up, um, and listened to it again, like about two weeks ago, uh, several times. So, uh, check that record out. Uh, next on my honorable mentions uh, was DJ Khaled's record that came out uh, this year called God Did. And listen, there's one main reason for this, okay? There are there's several tracks on there that are fantastic. I mean, some of the best names in hip-hop collab. People often talk about like, you know, what's DJ Khaled? <laughs> what's he do? Is he like a producer? Is it... He, he's a collaborator. He's a curator. Uh, I think he does some production stuff too. You know, I don't, I'm not a student of DJ Khaled. Um, however, everybody gets hyped when DJ Khaled starts yelling his name. You know what I'm saying? So if that's all he does, what a contribution. I just saw a post on his Instagram where like the record did so well. And, and Drake is on this really short opening track of the record. Uh, I think this was a gift for like the record doing well or something, but Drake gifted him like four luxury toilets. It was really funny. Uh, and DJ Khaled is a hoot on social media too. So, uh, go, go check him out if you don't follow him. It's funny, but, uh, here's the reason, the main reason I got captivated by this record was the title track, uh, of the album has verses. First of all, it's like eight and a half minutes long. The title track, God did. Uh, it's got verses from Rick Ross, Lil Wayne, and Jay Z, and the Jay Z verses, four or five minutes long, and it is incredible. It's one of, and I don't think this is hyperbolic. It's one of the best Jay Z verses ever. Uh, you just have to go listen to it in the right mindset. Wayne's verse is great. Rick's verse is great, but this, this. Uh, Jay Z verse is just outstanding. So, so please just go listen to that song. You may not love the whole record. You may not be a DJ Khaled fan, but if you're a hip hop fan, especially a Jay Z fan, go listen to the title track from God Did. It was awesome. Uh, next on my honorable mentions list, and I really struggled. This one was really on the edge for me. I really wanted to put it in there. Um, band from LA called Starcrawler. Uh, they released a full length album this year called She Said. They are like punk. Um, I talked about them in an episode months ago, just as a band that I was really loving. Um, but they are like punk, but like kind of grunge. Like there, there's things I hear like, you know, elements of whole, uh, the band whole, uh, from the nineties, Courtney loves band. And then I hear, um, like a very modern punk sound. Their stage shows, like I watch tons of videos of theirs and their music videos are fantastic. Very thought through. Uh, Steve Ho was in the video for, um, spoiler alert, he's the driver in the Roadkill video. If you haven't seen the video for Starcrawler's single, Roadkill. Great song, great video, great concept. They have a great, and I mean this in the best way possible, they have a great ba uh, brand. They know exactly who they are. So you should go listen to them. Um, Arrow DeWild is the front woman for that band. Henry Cash is a guitar player in that band. They're incredible. I think they're only going to get better and better, but this debut full-length record was just outstanding. So really, really great. Um, next on the list, uh, I'm battling a little cold. So if you hear me like I sound funny, I, I don't know. Just I don't even know why I told you that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, got some stuff going on. It's that season. you know. Anyway, uh, sorry. Next, honorable mention, Lainey Wilson. Now, let me say this. I don't listen to a ton of modern country music, and I don't have a stigma against it. Uh, I, you know, um, I don't think a lot of modern country music makes a lot of best of lists. And this is my theory. And I could be completely wrong because, you know, there's tons of talented, amazing people writing and playing and recording modern country music. Um, but I think, uh, m maybe the artists that rise to the top are the ones that seem to be incredibly sincere. And it's so hard to make it in that landscape because there are a lot of amazing country artists 
that are young and breaking out and, and, and busting out right now. And so it's really hard to stand out, I think, in that world as part of it. And it can be, there is a part of it that is very much a machine where other people are writing songs for the artist and the artist is just doing the songs. And I think there's a, a we sense the insincerity sometimes or the lack of connection in those sorts of things. However, Lainey Wilson, uh, it, her songs are some of the most honest. Um, she's a writer. Um, she's always been a writer. This is her third record, I believe, full length record. It's called Bell Bottom Country. Lainey Wilson, Bell Bottom Country is the record. Uh, the singles were just outstanding. She was one of the only artists in recent memory that I can remember that had two songs in the top. 20 she had a feature with another country artist who has a great record coming out in the beginning of next year called hardy uh called wait in the truck and then she was also on the chart for her single heart like a truck uh which are both outstanding sincere um storytelling picture painting what you expect from really really honest sincere authentic modern country music it just it was really great uh the musical works great the song flows great and she did something really smart i thought like the record released in october um and then she's on this season she's an actress on this season of yellowstone if you watch that show and there's been several episodes that have featured new songs of hers that were not on Bell Bottom Country, and they've gone and added them to the record like the day after the Yellowstone episode, which is new. I've never seen an artist do that before, like introduce a song on a television show and then that show like get added to the record. It's so smart. And so I just love so much of what she's doing. Super cool. I'm from North Louisiana too, and she's from North Louisiana. And so, you know, I, I, I like I like when North Louisiana people doing good stuff, you know. Uh, next, I got, I got three more honorable mentions and we're going to get into the list. So, um, Next on the list, Jack Harlow, Come Home, The Kids Miss You. What a great record. First class blew up. Jack Harlow was all over the place. I saw him on college game day as a guest picker, and he crushed it. He did a really good job. He was like at the top of the board there for, for quite a while. Uh, he had a hugely successful tour this year. Um, he's a guy that I think, you know, if you if you follow hip-hop music, you follow Jack Harlow's career. He's, he's definitely risen over the past season, you know, pretty – um, pretty dramatically, like he's, he's gotten incredibly popular. I'm pretty sure that he did arenas cause here in, here in Atlanta where, or near where I'm at, uh, the show was at state farm and it sold out here. And I know that most of that tour was sold out. So you're selling out arenas, man. You're, you're blowing it up. And if you haven't heard that, the whole record's great. There's some really fun stuff on that record. Uh, he did a song called Dua Lipa that was, that was, uh, really funny. There's some funny stories I read online. I don't know what's true and what's not true, but there's some funny stories about that. And uh, just a great hip hop record. Great hip hop record. Uh, short songs, lighthearted, great beats, great production on that record. So check it out if you haven't. Uh, next on the list, Butch Walker. Um, Butch Walker as Glenn is the name of the album. So here's what's so interesting to me. Butch Walker is like untouchable as a songwriter, producer. I mean, the guy, if you don't know who he is, he, he worked on, uh, was a producer on the uh, Green Day records you love, the Fallout Boy records you love, the Katy Perry records you love. Like, he can do it all. It doesn't matter the genre, rock, pop, indie, um, singer, songwriter, whatever. He has been nominated and won so many things. It's unreal. But he is a solo artist I just love. Uh, he released a record years ago called um, uh, Afraid of Ghost and love that record. And then Stay Gold, another record of his I really love. And then he did uh, kind of a concept album about a couple. And it, it was like this. It was almost like a, I don't know, rock opera concepty sort of thing. But it was a great record. And then um, this record is sort of a concept record. It's kind of, I don't know. So he personifies like a lounge balladeer piano player. And it's like these songs, you know, there's background sounds and, you know, fights going on. And I, like he's in just this Vegas y kind of loungy bar and he's a, you know, balladeer piano. It's just great. Every song is incredibly well written. And I, I say this about Butch's music Butch writes songs that are so good, anybody could sing them and they would probably be great. You know, if the performance is great, it would be a great song. But nobody sings them like Butch. And for some reason, this record is like almost him at his best. Like, uh, and he's just kind of 
being a part of himself, it feels like. I don't know. It's interesting. I could talk about that record for a long time, but really, 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 really love the record. Uh, Leather Weather is one of my favorite tracks on there. Go check it out. Last on my honorable mentions, Liam Gallagher's solo album. Come on, you know, Liam Gallagher from Oasis fame. Obviously, uh, the the t- not title track, the first single, Everything's Electric, and the t- title track's great too, but Everything's Electric is this just gritty, raging rock song and it was one of those it was in my top like 20 most listened to songs of the year uh on on uh, my apple music uh it i just love the sonics of it uh the way every bass guitars vocals everything is so in your face and just aggressive and loud uh great 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 rock record cover to cover and as much as i would love to see oasis get back together like so many of my friends would as well um i love what noel and liam are doing solo too so uh anyway go check out liam gallagher come on you know that's my honorable mentions okay let's let's get to the meat here we are my 10 favorite albums of 2022 i hope you're ready all right number 10 recently made the list because i kind of uh kind of missed this album um but I think I'm trying to, I'm, I'm looking at this information. Uh, I don't have a release date on this record. Maybe, you know, okay, let's, let's just get into it and we'll get there. Okay. Number 10, my number 10 favorite, and these are in order, obviously number 10 favorite album of the year is old time folks by Lee Baines and the glory fires. Now I just recently came up this came, came up on this record. They're kind of an, alternative but folk but indie but southern rock here here's the way i describe it this record feels like punk singer songwriter music it's like if if bob dylan made a punk album and it's very protest oriented like what we love about good protest music like whether it's bob dylan protest music or tom morello protest music or you know rage against the machine you know whatever what we love about great protest music is in this Lee Baines and the Glory Fires album, um, Old Time Folks. And you should go listen to it. It was very, like, it just immediately captivated me. I listened to it all the way through. I listened to a few more songs. I kind of listened to it a little bit more. And then I immediately sent it, like, like pretty quick for me. Like I don't, I don't share records with people a lot because I feel like I'm endor- like I'm, I'm endorsing that. It says something about my creative taste if people don't like it, you know. But I sent this pretty quick to some buddies of mine who were like, "Hey, this is a rager. This record matters." And I had never heard of this band. I had never heard this record. Obviously, I saw it on a list of records that you might have missed. You know, in 2022, uh, about a I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. It's really recent. But I've not been able to get off this record, man. It's it's amazing. And if you like that sort of thing, or you're looking for something with a little a little something different, you know, uh, check it out because I really, really, really like it. Um, the title track, sort of the first uh, song on the album, really excellent. And and it just it just gets better the whole time. It's there's parts of it too. I think I told a friend of mine that that they're very like Counting Crows. It's like punk Counting Crows. It's like really great uh so so go check it out all right go check it out number 10 on the list starting with lee baines and the glory fires uh old time folks album number my number nine record of the year is uh from a canadian indie pop band called always now let me say this i had pronounced it always for a long time because it's spelled a-l-v-v-a-y-s i discovered them on their first album which was self-titled back in 2014 they had a song called marry me archie um and uh, or archie marry me can't remember what it's called um maybe it says right here i'm like i'm like i'm like learning as we're talking too yeah archie marry me um uh wikipedia says it was a minor hit i disagree <laughs> uh anyway i heard that song i have a playlist in my apple music that I started like way back in the day, 04, 05, um, when I was um, just like Apple uh, or iTunes was just kicking off. And I just started adding any and every um, track I could that I thought was just a good song. Man, it's a great song. I'm going to add it. Now, it's been years, you know, because that playlist, I started 04, 05, something like that. 
And now there's like six or 700 songs in this playlist. And, um, Archie Marry Me is, is one of those songs. And so I got familiar with them early on, but they released this album Blue Rev, uh, this year, which is just a great, great album. Um, the title track, The Pharmacist, the guitar solo in that song is really great. Uh, Easy On Your Own is a great song. They have a song on the record called Tom Verlaine, who is the singer from the band Television, which, if you again, if you watch the top, my, my favorite 10 albums of all time, Television's Marquee Moon is one of my favorite 10 albums of all time, and Tom Verlaine was a singer for that band. So whenever I, I see names and I go, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, I haven't like gotten deep enough to like figure out what they're saying about Tom Verlaine, but I just think it's cool that they have a, a, a song that's named after a dude like that. One of my favorite tracks on the record is a song called Very, uh, Very Online Guy. There's some cool synth stuff that opens that um, as well. Uh, they are a great, they're, they're Canadian indie pop, so very like synth guitar driven, but, or a synth driven, but, but cool guitars as well. Um, and this is their, yeah, this is their third album. Um, Molly Rankin fronts that band. It's kind of the, the primary, uh, singer songwriter in that group. But anyway, it's always, but no W the W is actually two V's. So it's, it, you would think it's all V's, but it, it's actually, I read a couple of places actually pronounced always their album blue rev number nine on my list of my 10 favorite albums of the year. Uh, next, um, the midnight, the midnight, the midnight released an album this year called, uh, heroes. And I discovered the midnight. I was a little late actually to the party on the midnight because, uh, I didn't really, I knew who they were, but I didn't lean in hard until they released an album called monster during the pandemic in 2020. And I started to listen to it really hard. That was a great record uh, as well. This year they release Heroes, and they it's a, a guy from Atlanta, um, and uh, his name is Tim, I think. Tyler, I'm sorry. Tyler Lyle from Atlanta, and a Danish producer named, sorry, Tim. Tim's the other guy in the band, Tim uh, McEwen. And he's a Danish guy, but he's, he's based in LA. They kind of got together, started making music, and it's it's... When I say that it's 80s, it's in like all the best ways. It's like very encapsulated in that video game, Tron, uh, you know, shreddy guitars, but cool synth stuff. It's like, it's like all the best stuff of the 80s with like an incredible songwriting, incredible production, um, uh, I, I found out who they were because I work with a pedal company that, that is based in the Midwest and a guitar pedal company. They use a lot of their stuff. And that's how I kind of found out about them was I saw this guitar pedal company post about the band, maybe back in 2018, 2019. Um, and Heroes is their fourth full length, full length album. I believe they do a lot where they do um, like instrumental uh, albums as well. Um, they had another album called kids come out in 2018. It's also a good record. Um, but heroes uh, number eight on my list. Um, one of the songs on heroes, I should mention this also made my, my big um, uh, playlist uh, called change your heart or die. It was one of the early singles and just, just great record. Um, all right. Moving on, number seven on the list. Number seven on the list, my top uh, 10 favorite albums of 2022 is Harry's House from Harry Styles. And I, I got a, you know, just a feeling that I'm not alone in this because that record blew up. It was just huge. Um, obviously, you know, Harry Styles doesn't need my help selling any records, that's for sure. And as it was, the single uh, off of this newest record just exploded and, and for good reason. I mean, he was coming off of, um, you know, fine line was, uh, 2019, I think watermelon sugar high was a, was a huge, uh, song. Even if you don't know who Harry Styles is, you, uh, have heard that song somewhere. But one of the things I love about this is, um, 
the minimalist kind of production. And I honestly can't nail it down to an era of time. Like it, it, there's elements of it. I go, oh, that's 80s. Oh, that's 70s. Oh, that's 90s. Oh, that's 00s. Like you kind of hear it all. There's cool, simple guitar stuff and melodies in it. It's it's super open. It's not like, you know, just layer after layer after layer of production, like a lot of modern pop music is. I felt like it was pretty spacious. And then even like the, there are some quintessential themes on the record, um, you know, romantic things, you know, relationship deals. But there's also just some really fun, like, uh, music from a sushi restaurant opens the record. And I think it was one of the singles as well. And it just, I don't know, thematically, it's just interesting and fun. And you're left kind of trying to figure out what this pop song is about really. And I sort of, I sort of love that. And so it, listen, if pop music isn't your, your bag, you should still go listen to this record because it's one of those, uh, some other records that I love this year were the, in, in that pop vein, like that very clearly pop music vein that I thought were really great. Uh, was the Carly Way Carly Ray Jepsen album that came out? That was really close to making honorable mention for me. Uh, Listen to that record a lot, and the Charlie Puth album. Again, I I just love the way that it seems like there's no rules in pop music making right now, like tracking, like weird guitars and weird drum samples, and you know all that stuff is seemingly acceptable. So it's really uh, makes things really interesting. And there's a lot of great pop music coming out nowadays. But uh, you know Harry Styles. I don't need to talk about that forever. But if you haven't listened to it and you don't listen to pop music, uh, you should go, you know, check it out. Um, there's some cool stuff uh, that that's on this record that I, I think any music lover would appreciate. So, uh, moving on. Next, the band Spoon. They're an Austin band. Um, they have had several records that I really love. This year, they released a record uh, called Lucifer on the Sofa, which was an amazing album uh, in and of itself. They also released a, um, like a remix, uh, album of that. I'm going to look it up so I don't get the, um, so I don't get the, uh, name of the remix album wrong. Um, Lucifer on the moon, uh, is the name of kind of this remix album from the record. And I've, I think I like the remix album, not as much, but, but almost as much as the actual record itself. And, I think that it's easier to remix like really great songs. This this record is just full of killer songs. And they they have so many records. If you've never heard of Spoon, they've been around a long time. Um uh Austin, Texas band. Um started in 1993. Um I mean, rock, pop, art rock, experimental, indie singer-songwriter. They kind of cross all of those genres their first record dropped in 96 uh they've been making killer stuff ever since then um gimme fiction was a, a huge album for them uh the gaga record in 07 was a great record for them my favorite uh record of theirs is they want my soul it came out in 2014 since then they did hot thoughts and then loose on the sofa so if loose on the sofa is in my top 10 of the year but it's not even my favorite spoon album that tells you something about how good this band is so go listen to loose on the sofa it's a killer album um what was the single from hardest cut was a single wild i think was a single as well and ironically though not ironically those are my favorite two songs on the record um the guitar tones and stuff in hardest cut are just outstanding And for a band who's been around since 1996, they don't seem like they've been around since 1996. It's so, uh, or 1993, really. It's so stinking innovative. Every record, they sound like themselves, but like reinvented. And it's just really, really, really refreshing. Um, Next on the list, uh, The Smile. The Smile released an album called A Light for Attracting Attention this year. Um, The Smile is made up of Tom York from Radiohead, Johnny Green from Radiohead, and uh, Tom Skinner. And they all play like multiple instruments. Um, Nigel Godrich, uh, who does all produced all the Radiohead, every one of the Radiohead albums produced this record as well. They were just here in Atlanta and I couldn't go see them, but a friend of mine got to see them. Uh, in Nashville and a couple of my friends actually at the Ryman and said, I think it was at the Ryman and, it, and uh, said it was just amazing. It's a critically acclaimed album, uh, sold tons on vinyl, um, as did most of these albums, even the Harry Styles album. I think the Harry Styles album and the Taylor Swift album both set records for like vinyl sales this year, um, which is great. Um, 
The Smile played uh, Glastonbury this year. Um, they kind of formed during the the lockdowns back in 2020. And man, it, it's hard to think that anything that Tom York, for me, Radiohead nerd fan, hard to think for me that any uh, thing that Johnny Greenwood and, and Tom York touch wouldn't, you know, uh, be amazing. Um, uh, the other interesting part is Tom Skinner, who he's he's known, he's a known drummer. He was in a jazz group called Sons of Commit, but he was also... Uh, uh, in, uh, like grunge and metal bands. Like he was in napalm death for a minute, I think. Um, and just, I mean, he's a great musician in and of himself. Uh, the stuff he does in this is way more from his jazz chops and stuff, which is just really cool. Um, the smile, if you've never heard them, they were just recently on Fallon. That'd be a great, just go check out that. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, try to remember to link that in the show notes too. uh, go watch that performance, um, from them. It was really great. Um, they did a song called you will never work in television again. Great song. I think that was the first single. The second single, if I remember right, was the smoke. That's my favorite song. There's this bass line on that tune that Tom York plays and sings at the same time. It's just a groove. It's a groove. Uh, so go check it out. Um, kind of an extension of Radiohead, but different, very different. Um, uh, in a lot of ways. So if you haven't checked out the record from the smile, a light for attracting attention, go check it out. All right. Number four, we're getting close. Number four, number four from uh, a heavy band, a band called Norma Jean. They're a Georgia based band. Um, they formed at least in Georgia. I don't know where they're based out of now. Um, but, uh, they formed out of Georgia. Um, and let's see their first, hold on, I'm gonna look this up, make sure I don't get it wrong. I found out about them. Um, because I just think that the their original frontman, his name was Josh Goggins, great, great frontman. He he fronts several. He's fronted several bands. He's had several projects, done these sorts of things. Um, and Norma Jean, they've had some member swaps throughout the years, like a lot of bands go through. But every record they release has been really great to me. And I don't say that much about heavy bands who have lineup changes, because usually I like heavy bands. And I like their records because of the conglomeration of the players, because I think that music is really hard to play together well. You have to be really tight. And so I just, I, I thought, oh God, The Aftermath, one of their albums was um, just amazing. Um, there was another, the record right after that, what was the record that they did? Hmm. What was the record? Uh, Redeemer. Redeemer was right after that. I thought that was a great record too. And then they kind of like were off my radar. They're making cool stuff, but off my radar. But this year they released a brand new album uh, called Death Rattle Sing For Me. The videos are amazing. There's a song on the record called Spearmint Revolt that is just brutal. And two or three other songs that are uh, Killing Word is a incredible song was a killer song i guess it would be killing word killer song um yeah if you love heavy music and even if you don't the songwriting is so wonderful on all and then when i say heavy i mean i mean heavy like it's heavy uh but you should at least listen to spearmint revolt top to bottom and if you don't like the record move on but if you listen to that and you go dang this is incredible which i think you will i think you will uh then you should Save it. I bought it on vinyl. Most of these records I try to pick up on vinyl. Um, I picked up Harry Styles, The Smile, um, Norma Jean, and a couple of these others that I'm about to talk about as well. Uh, I was just telling my daughter in, in the car today that I need to go pick up the next one on my list too. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but go check out Death Rattle Sing for me. The artwork is great. They always have incredible artwork. In fact, they were nominated for a Grammy um, for Best Record Packaging in 19... Or not 19... 2006 for Oh God, the Aftermath. Um, they always have cool packaging, cool artwork. Um, and, uh, and so you should go check it out. I think you would love it if you love heavy music and you haven't, haven't heard the band. You would love the band, but particularly this record and this iteration of the band is really, really great. Um, all right. Number three. We're getting there. Number three. So I have like a handful of friends that I really trust when they send me music. It's probably excellent. And 
my friend Jonathan sent me this record. He was on an ep- a couple of episodes ago. Jonathan Maloney is a graphic designer here in the Atlanta area. Um, when he sends me a record, he's one of the guys that when he sends it, I'm like, all right, all right, I get it. Go back and listen to Jonathan's episode. Super fun, super great guy. Great taste in music. He sent me a record by Barty Strange, which at the time, this was earlier in the year um, when this record, Farm the Table, uh, came out, and I had never, uh, never heard of him before. Um, so I started listening to it and I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, like figure out what the genre, like I listened to the first song, I'm like, Oh, okay. I know what this is. And then the second song comes on. I'm like, Whoa, that's different. Third song comes on. I'm like, man, that's real different. We get like four or five songs on the record. I, I caught myself looking like, did it flip to another record? Like, not that it wasn't, it was incredibly cohesive. And I think that this is the brilliance that I realized in Barty Strange's music. Um, it it transcends genre in the most uncheesy way. Sometimes I feel that when artists who are clearly in one genre try to traverse into another genre, it's a little weird. Like it's real. That's really hard to do with integrity to me to transcend genres fully, you know? And so when I listened to this, I went, wow, I don't know what category to put this in. This record, Farm to Table, it's, there's elements of hip hop. There's elements of uh, singer songwriter. There's elements of indie rock. There's elements of folk. There's elements of like electronica stuff. There's, it is so incredibly wide ranging and every song has this incredible integrity. The closest thing I can give you, which I still think isn't as widely um, genre um, uh, bending, uh, is TV on the radio. I think there's a little bit of TV on the radio vibe in Barty's music. Um, and I was just captivated by this. Uh, he goes by Barty Strange. Uh, his real name is uh, Barty's Leon Cox Jr., uh, Oklahoma guy, uh, based in D.C. now. But this record blew up, and it is, I saw it, it came out in June-ish, like mid-June, I think, and it is just, it's on every list. If you go down every top 50 records of the year, maybe even top 20, I think it's in Rolling Stone's top 10, actually. It is phenomenal. And if you haven't heard it, no matter what genre of music you like, like there's elements of like, if you like singer songwriter stuff like David Ryan Harris or, you know, people like that. If you like hip hop stuff, you know, really thoughtful hip hop music, there's elements of that in it. Like it is just really, really amazing. And I have listened to it cover to cover several times in the past few weeks and just really enjoyed it. And that's one of the records that I really didn't, I didn't get on vinyl that I need to go pick up for sure. So, um, Barty Strange, Farm to the Table, uh, Farm to Table, um, number three on my list. Number two, number two, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Unlimited Love. I am a guy who's about sonics. Like if if the record sounds good, I'm going to keep listening just because I am a songwriter, producer, guitar player. I work in that world a little bit. And so if the record sounds good, I'm in. And this record is just, it's live, tape. Rick Rubin produced and the first four songs when I started listening, I was like, this is amazing. And listen to the whole album. I have, I definitely have my, my, my favorites on the record for sure, but I'm not going to say them because I, I think if you just start at track one, make sure you have a good 20 minutes to just give those first four songs a solid listen and pay attention. You're going to, you're going to love this record. It is um, way up there on the chili peppers catalog for me too. Now they released a second album this year called um, the dream canteen. It's got a real long title, but it's dream canteen and it's a little bit more psychedelic. It still fits with these songs. I feel like pretty well, but this collection of songs, the unlimited love album was the one that I just thought was fantastic. And I've listened to that record cover to cover to cover. You heard me talking about my Apple music replay earlier. There's a reason why the chili peppers and Harry styles and another artist I'm about to mention were, were way up there because I literally listened to those, those records a ton this year. So, um, the chili peppers, uh, always have been, you know, great. Uh, I mean, people argue me with that. Not always. I've always been captivated by what they're doing. 
Um, and this year, I think that they're just at a place in their career where they want to do what they want to do. And sometimes that leans a little like self-indulgent for artists when they make double albums or whatever. But I think they did kind of a pulled kind of a Radiohead move. Not that I would put these two records in the same camp as like Kid A and Amnesiac because that these records are good. These Chili Peppers albums are good. But Kid A Amnesiac was just like the wisest. We're going to release two albums really close together. And both of those records were really, really amazing. Like, like in the canon of record releasing, if you don't know Kid A and Amnesiac, it's like a thing. So go. But these two records are, the Chili Peppers albums are really, really, really amazing albums in and of themselves. And I think they did their careers and themselves and definitely us as fans a favor by releasing both these albums this year. I just went to unlimited love first and I could never get over it. To be honest, I don't think I gave dream canteen a fair listen because I was so hooked on unlimited love. And, and so go check it out. If you like alternative rock, uh, music, Anthony sound, the band sounds great for Shanti's back with the band. Uh, probably, um, I, I love Frushanti, John Frushanti, the guitar player. I love his solo stuff as well. And, uh, he, you know, these parts are just so, so wonderful. There's a great performance from uh, the Howard Stern show where they did a few songs. Really great to hear these songs just stand as a band and you hear them on the record and they're not that different. Like they didn't do a ton of production stuff on the record that they're not doing live. They sold out stadiums all across America this year. They're about to go. Um, uh, they're doing a, a European tour and they have some incredible openers for that tour that they're kind of rotating like St. Vincent and Iggy Pop and I mean, they're just going to have a heck of a year. So go check that record out if you missed it. And now, my number one, my favorite album of 2022, and it came out in January. Listen, when something drops that early in the year, the odds of it sticking around, you know what I'm saying? Like staying up there in your top 10 is really hard because a lot of great records come out. But this album was just unbelievable. Um. Our Lady Peace dropped an album called Spiritual Machines 2. Now, I am very partial. I love Our Lady Peace. I uh, have listened to them since 1995 when their debut album, Navid, came out. In fact, my wife and I had been dating for one month. Here's a little cheesy story for you. Dating one month at the time. She bought me a little gift for our one-month dating anniversary because that that's what you do when you're in high school. And she got me a card, and she bought me Our Lady Peace, Navid, on CD. And I have loved that band ever since. I own every one of their records. Uh, I, everything that's available on vinyl, I think I have over here to my left. Um, I bought, I pre-ordered Spiritual Machines too, and then waited like five months to get it because vinyl pressings were so behind. Um, but it is outstanding. So it's a it's a sequel. Spiritual Machines one. The record came out right after uh, two thousand. I think it was like two thousand three. It was like Spiritual Machines one. And it was based, Spiritual Machines 1 was based on a book that was written by a futurist named Ray Kurzweil. And he made all these predictions about what would happen in the world by the year like 2018, 2019. And he was like 86 or 87% right about everything that he said. Um, uh, Ray Kurzweil was on my radar because he invented the, the Kurzweil keyboard and was involved in inventing some of the first keyboards ever. Um, Maybe the first ever. I don't know. I shouldn't look that up. But my brother had a Kurzweil keyboard in, in the 90s when we were growing up. And then Ray's just a really intelligent, smart guy. And so uh, Our Lady Peace did this record, Spiritual Machines, uh, based on Ray's book, The Age of Spiritual Machines. Well, Ray wrote another book, so Our Lady Peace did another album. And I don't know which came first. I don't know like if the record inspired the book or the book of the record, but Ray's on the album uh doing predictions like in between a few of the songs and it's pretty crazy to hear and on the spiritual machines 2 tour our lady peace is actually taking like hologram ray on the road with them and there's like a hologram of ray on stage like making predictions and stuff in between the tunes and it is just uh amazing um the record is it's super dancey for a for a very heavily thematic rock album. It's very, also very upbeat for a very future focused guitar, guitar driven, um, 
uh, record, rock record. It you would think with the themes and the genre that maybe there would be some darkness to it and you know sludgy ballads and stuff like that. But it is a very danceable, uh, joyful, fun album to listen to. Even though the themes are super heavy and super real and 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 really fun to think about and have conversations about. And so. Maybe you're out there and Our Lady Peace is just an old 90s band to you. If you're young, maybe they were a band in the 90s that you knew of but didn't hit you heavy. I would encourage you to go back and listen to Spiritual Machines 1 and then also pull up Spiritual Machines 2 and give it three songs. It is just super, 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 super fun. So that is it. My top 10 albums of the year. I'm going to recap them real quick. Lee Baines and the Glory Fires, Old Time Folks, number 10. Number 9, All Always, Blue Rev. Number eight, The Midnight Heroes. Number seven, Harry Styles, Harry's House. Number six, Spoon, Lucifer on the Sofa. Number five, The Smile, A Light for Attracting Attention. Number four, Norma Jean, Death Rattle, Sing for Me. Number three, Barty Strange, Farm to the Table. Number two, The Red Hot Chili Peppers, Unlimited Love. And my number one favorite album of the year, Our Lady Peace, Spiritual Machines 2. Thanks for going on this journey with me. Listen, I'm going to put everything in the show notes so you can check out links to Apple Music and all that sort of stuff. I'll also put all of the artists' uh, Instagram handles in there so you can go follow them on Instagram as well. I'm really hoping to get a few of these people on the show uh, next year. I'm going to reach out to some of these artists, see if we can have some fun, and talk about some of these records that I love so much because that would be uh, an absolute blast. But listen, we, we hope you had a great 2022 and... Make sure you're following us. Make sure you're subscribed, all that good stuff. But I really just want to say thank you to all the listeners out there who have jumped on the MiFi train. We're going to have a lot of new fun stuff in January, already booking our guests for that. Uh, we got a couple more episodes for the end of the year, at least one more, maybe two more before the end of the year, depending on the scheduling. And in January, we got some exciting stuff, some new merch, going to brush up the website a little bit and let you in on some really cool guests that we have coming up in January, February. And, and we may do our first live episode of MiFi and we may do our first on the road episode of MiFi. So lots of exciting stuff coming up. Thanks for being a fan. Thanks for being a part of the MiFi family. We hope you have a great holiday season, wherever you're at, however you're celebrating. We hope you have a happy new year. Take care. Until next time. Peace. Peace.